Hey everybody, it's time for the Bell for Real Show. Are you ready? Come on. Hey everybody. Are you ready? It's time for the Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Keep coming. Hey everybody. Hey, 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 hey everybody. It's time for the Bell for Real Show. Welcome to the Bell for Real Show. Hello and welcome to the Vet For Real Show. Today we're in Hopkins, South Carolina and we are at New Light Beulah Baptist Church with the one and only Pastor Malcolm Taylor. Hello, Pastor Good Taylor. Good morning. Good morning, Good sis. How morning. you doing? I'm wonderful. It is a blessing to have you with us today on the show. I'm grateful. I'm grateful as well. I am so excited um, with your topic. It's the heart, body, and soul. Right. Tell me about that. Um, about two years ago, three years ago, I was searching for a vision for our church. Um, just understanding the culture where I live in the Lord's community, which I love so much. Um, asking the Lord for a vision unlike any other, because sometimes people are trying to activate things too fast. And so when I read the scripture, the Lord took me to understanding the mind, the body, and the soul which gives us longevity. We yes. know that our health is our wealth. Uh, our, our younger generations now are attracted to the accoutrements of finances, to things, but those things don't last. Health is what's most important. So the Lord took me and showed me how to regenerate our minds, our bodies, and our soul, because from a ministry perspective, your soul is the last thing that from a ministry perspective that you need to go after people with. And so I launched this healthy ministry, this healthy initiative relating to food. Um, I feel like if I can get you, get your body together, right. then work on your mind, then mm -hmm. we can get your soul. Wow. So the first like initiative that. that I brought in was to bring in the, the fresh fruits and vegetables. And we've been doing that now for pretty much about three years. Okay. You know, every week, every other week, we bring in tractor trailer loads of fruits and vegetables of all assortments and just try to feed people. Um, our community suffers from a lot of high blood pressure, diabetes, yes. things of such. And, you know, we are still eating. Um, That's so full. Yeah, I wanted to say another word, slave yes. food. But we are still, say that again. we still have the slave diet, Maybe you know, not. the slave mentality of yes. diets, of eating the scraps. Yes. You know, the slave owners would give the slaves the, the, the worst part of the meat, the leftovers. And, you know, we were able to take it and to make the best of it. And that's what we do as a people. We learn to take the worst and make it for the best. So we're still having the slave diet, slave mentality of eating, you know, adding the grease to all of our foods, the, yes. you know, the chitlins, the, the, the fat back and all of that stuff. So, you know, that stuff is killing us. It is. It's killing us as a people, you know seeing a lot of you know diabetes and high blood pressure and stuff like that and it's all contributed i mean i found out not too long ago that strokes can be prevented by what we eat mm. you eat wow. right you can live longer and it's it's a burden it's a burden to me to see so many younger people dying in our community and some of our senior citizens and you know i just remember one day i went to my mom's house in the kitchen i noticed another lady's name on the medicine bottle and I asked my mom, I said, mom, 
why is her medicine here? She says, well, us senior citizens, we can't afford medicine. So what we do is we share. Mm. We share medicine. And that bothered me so oh, much. Yes. And so, you know, just looking at bringing in the fresh fruits and vegetables to get our people to eat properly and to start educating. Now we're in our second initiative of the component of healthy living and healthy lifestyles. It's called the eating component. I mean, not the eating component, but the mind component. Right. So the mind component is teaching people how to cook properly, mm. how to cook efficiently, how to use maybe turkey products versus pork products. Um, just trying to channel and balance out our lifestyle as far as you know the eating comes. So then this Monday, another component to the healthy initiative is exercise. Right. You know, if you see our other brothers and sisters, they eat, they go out, walk, exercise. But with us, we eat a full course meal. And before you know it, we there made our cross, which is no good for us. Right. So once again, that's another of our components is the healthy lifestyle is meaning that we exercise. Okay. And so on this Monday, coming Monday night, we will have uh, Sharetta Reese. Oh, wow. It's going to be our aerobics. We're going to do a parking lot aerobics. Okay. And um, just everybody's invited to come out. There's no cost. We just ask for a dollar donation as to help out water. Right. Um, but the, the healthy initiative lifestyle is just helping us from a mind perspective, from a body perspective. And then once we get all that stuff together, then we can work on the spirit. Right. Because it's impossible for me to come after your spirit when your mind is not together mm -hmm. and when you're not physically together. Yes. And we know there's so many physical challenges, but I'm just so encouraged to uplift our people in this community and try to do better by them and show them a better way. I believe that we will do better if we're shown better. Amen. That's right. I agree with you. You know, one thing I came to um, the parking lot, I came and got me my basket. That's right. And to see all the people that came out, it was just a blessing for me mm -hmm. um, to see you. You don't see most pastors involved like this. I mean, I'm just, this is the bad for real. All I right. keep it real. All so right. I'm going to be honest. All right. You don't see that. I saw you out there working, taking those boxes and you know, not only that, I've watched you for a while. Um, not only do you do it here at your church, but you have other churches come in as well, and they take their loads out to their community. I think that's so awesome. I think that's awesome. I always tell people, Ms. Bev, that we're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. A blessing doesn't do me any good if I keep it to myself. Right. We're called to be each other's brothers and sisters. Keep a good friend of mine, my fraternity brother, Jeffrey Lampkin, sent 300 more boxes down to Manning sent 300 boxes down to Sumter. We are sending bar boxes up to Ms. Barbara Chisholm up in Lancaster, Kershaw County, to Newberry. It's just, you know, it's a blessing to be able to bless other people. That's My grandmother right. always told me that a closed hand does not get fed. You gotta be able to open that hand to That's allow right. things to come in. And then the more you allow to come in and let things go out, the more comes in. I've always just been taught to share, Amen. to share. Nothing is my own, God gives it to me, so I share. So I'm just encouraged to be able to be a blessing to other people. Uh, and that's what the Lord keeps doing. He trusts me. Amen. God trusts that's me. That's big right there by and itself. And when God can trust you, yes. he'll give you more. Amen. God can trust you and he know that your heart is right. Yes. And God will continue to pour more blessings your way. And the scripture is true. God will open up windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you shall not have room to receive. Amen. I love it. And that is such a true, I've, I've witnessed it from my own self. You know, I'm a giver. Mm -hmm. And when you give, you give from the heart. Right. You don't give to look for something in return. Right. You know, and I thank God for the show. Um, I believe the Ben For Real show is blessing people. Mm -hmm. I can see it, but I can feel it in the oh, spirit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's reaching the hearts of those who are lost. And, you know, that's what it's about to be able to give. Right. And I just think it's awesome. I love the part where you said that not only that, you're teaching them how to eat healthy, uh -huh. but you're teaching them how to exercise. So mm -hmm. you have a young lady that comes out, mm -hmm. that she come once a week. She's gonna start this Monday. Okay. We're gonna begin at seven o'clock, seven to eight. Okay. And I know that the time change, and we will just gauge the time as far as the lighting outside, mm -hmm. but she'll come out and this is our first Monday. And once again, it's open to the public, to our community to okay. come and just you know, have a parking space. We're going to do one hour of aerobics. And this will be every Monday? Every Monday. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. 
That's awesome. Yes, ma'am. So you guys hear that, you got to come on out and join. Yes. It's free. Yes. One dollar for your own water. You can't beat that. Yeah, we just going to so buy a case. Awesome. You know, you can take two or three dollars and buy yeah. 50 bottles of water. Absolutely. So we just want to be able to bless you, be a blessing to people who Absolutely. may come and don't have any water or don't have a dollar. We can give a dollar. Absolutely. That's nothing. Absolutely, absolutely. Pastor Teller, tell me what else you do in the community. You do so much. Anything that I can to help. My motto is if I can't help you, I'm not going to hurt you. Right. My thing is I just want to be able to be a blessing to our community um, from food. Like today I'm getting a truck in about 12 o'clock of watermelons. Wow. Just give it out. And, you know, God has just been blessing me to connect with people. There are people all the time calling my phone. I don't know how they get my number. But they called me saying, hey, we want to bless your ministry. Wow. We've seen what you do all the way from Detroit, Michigan. A lady last wow. week sent two boxes of stuff from Detroit, Michigan. Wow. She said, I see what you do on Facebook. I love my community. Wow. And this is not a black That's or so white awesome. thing. I love right. people. I'm not caught up in the race thing because I don't see color. That's, That's you know, right. if you cut me open right now, you will see red blood. You won't see black blood. That's I right. believe that we need to put this racism stuff I'm on. Away. Speak because it's it. dividing us more and more. Yes. Stop looking at each other because technically we don't have colors of skin. Mm-hmm. We don't have that. We are people. We that's are right. people. We are God's people. And that's how I look at it. I don't have any racial division towards anybody. Whenever we're giving something here, I will tell you, even the members of New Life Beulah do not get priority. See? It's community. Everybody. Wow. Because we are blessed to be a blessing. What Amen. if I only bless New Life Beulah? Right. No, that's not what God wants me to do. God wants me to open up to the community mm-hmm. because the community needs, we need to come together. We are a tight community. We love each other. But there's some things that we need to work on because so much growth and development is coming this way. Yes, it is. And if we don't come together, we're going to find ourselves on the losing end. That's right. So I just believe as a community, um, working together does work. And as things come our way, you know, I will push them out to the community. Um, Medicine, we got our staff here now is preparing and, uh, and dividing medicine. I received a truckload of medicine last week, over-the-counter medicine. Wow. Um, it's all over-the-counter, good dates, right. um, vitamins, you know, health aids, um, all kinds of stuff that from like the, the, the uh, con- what do they call those stores, the, um, like CVSs and things, mm-hmm. they donate to the ministry. Wow. So uh, we just got a lot going on. I just That's thank God for the opportunity to be able to minister to you because ministering is much more than, than preaching. Amen. It's much more than just that. Yes, it is. It's showing and giving. Yes. That's yes. what it's all about. Jesus, not only did he feed them, but he gave, not only did he give them a word, but he gave them something else. He gave them some substance. Yes. And I believe that's the key to like giving people some substance. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I can give you a word all day, but a word ain't going to help you when you're hungry. That's right. You can't even think when you're hungry. Right. Absolutely. Think. Absolutely. You know, I when I when we speak about being hungry, like even for my nonprofit organization, WADA, Women Against Children, right. Teen Abuse, we have children that has come to the program and parents that doesn't even go to the pan. Right. They're in need of food. Right. So, you know, being in the Lower Richland mm-hmm. area, our community, um, really do need help. Right. We see everything building up in all the other counties around us. Right. And it's just like, you know, Laura Richland is being forgotten. Right. Oh, so no. we're not going to we let, that... let that happen. No. So I'm excited about, you know, what is coming this way. A lot of people don't see it, but I see it. Oh, no. You see it. Yes. So, you know, um, you mentioned the part about People being healthy, not eating right, high, high blood pressure. Um, a lot of people are leaving us. Right. I see it all the time. And you, tell us about that. Well, I work as a Richland County uh, deputy coroner. And, um, you know, one of my jobs is to do autopsies. And I do that. And I see a lot of people on the table, young people mm-hmm. from strokes, heart attacks, all that stuff. And that's kind of, you know, it just helps me to see the bigger picture right. of changing the way we do things. Mm-hmm. You know, when our four parents ate, yeah, they ate the bad stuff, but they worked out in the field all day. They, they worked. They did. They, you know, they were able to work, but now we don't work like that. Mm-hmm. We work less. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's, you know, we have to do things in moderation. My mother will always say, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Right. So we have to do things in moderation. 
And so, you know, from that perspective of just seeing our community, we've got all a lot of, you know, crime, murders and stuff that's going on, right you know, drug overdose, and it's happening right in our communities. Right and I'm just crazy enough to say enough is enough. I'm, I, I'm just that person to say, hey, we need to stop all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, the drugs is just running rampant. Yes. There's some new drugs coming into our community mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. They're overdose. I mean, it's just amazing. And you know, often people say, "Well, I didn't think that this this type of race would do that." They're, drugs are not race bound. No, they don't have a color. No, too. no. Mm -hmm. Drugs take out whomever it wants to take out. And I'm just that person that's willing to stand against the odds. I'm willing to stand against those and say, "Hey, we need to do better." Treat ourselves better. Treat our fellow man, his brother and sister better. Because it's you know, like you just said, Miss Bell, the growth is coming this way. It is. It's definitely coming this way. Mm -hmm. And we just got to be able to be prepared for that Absolutely. growth. Absolutely. As a community and as a people, be prepared. Absolutely. And the signs of the times. Right. You know, this is just being honest. When we see today, it's not like it used to be. Right. Last year and the year before. Absolutely. Things today, you know, I was even told at one point that we, some of us need to go back to learning how to grow our own. Absolutely. You know, because <laughs> nowadays stuff is not in the stores that right. you is going as fast as you get in. And the prices are being jacked up. And they're being jacked up. Prices are increasing because it's called shortage and demand. Mm -hmm. This COVID-19 thing really should have taught all of us something. Because sure. God is definitely speaking. I just don't believe that people are listening. No. God is definitely speaking, even through this COVID. A lot of people say, well, Pastor, do you think that God created COVID? No, God didn't create COVID, That's right. but God allowed it to happen. Mm -hmm. And he allows it to happen to teach us something. Yes. And if you're not the one who's going to learn from it, then you're going to result back to your same old traditional or basic habits. Right. But I just believe God is calling us to a different form of ministry, as we can see now, churches you know, are empty on Sunday, but now people are recording live. They're mm -hmm. doing things, you know, families should be getting tighter, you know, communities should be getting better. Um, and I just believe that, you know, we as a community, we got to be able to stand together to see, you know, what I do now, and I'll be honest with you, but this is not about me. Sure. What I do is for the generation that's coming after me. Come on now. We got to prepare for those kids who are now in elementary school. That's right. We got to make provisions for them so that as they grow up and we get a little older, they will say, somebody thought about me. Mm -hmm. And that's my whole ministry. It's not about me. I've got a grandson who's three years old. I want to make sure that when he get, graduates from high school, he will be able to go to college. I want yes. to make, make sure that he'd be able to have a place to stay. You know, I do what I do for the next generation. That's right. It's not about me. That's right. If you don't do what you can while you can, the Bible says work while it's day because no man knows the hour mm. that the son of man shall come. Yes. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. That's, right. That's why I work like I do for today. Amen. That's right. It's important to work. Yes. Very. You never know when your number is going to be called. That's right. You never know when you take when you're going to take your last breath. That's right. So the reality is you gotta work. You gotta make see the good. And I and I'm the type of person I always try to see the positive out of everything. Right. Everything. I I tell people stop being negative. That's it. Negative is in a company by itself. If you hang with negative people, you're going to produce negative. That's it. I try to limit my conversations with negative people because mm -hmm. it doesn't help me. It doesn't. So I try to surround myself with positive people That's so true. that That's we right. can grow. That's because, right. you know, millionaires make millionaires. That's right. They do. Yeah. Millionaires make Let's millionaires. Keep it real. That's the it's truth. true. If you want to be in that certain realm, start hanging out with the right people. And that's like from the Christian perspective. If you want to be stronger in your Christian faith, hang out with the people who are already strong. Ooh, come on. With Don't that. hang out with somebody who just joined the church yesterday. That's right. Hang out with somebody who's strong in their walk and they can help you. Mm, but see, yeah, I, you know, the thing right. is, that that's just who I am. I want to help people. That's good. In every way, because I need help myself. I understand. I need help. Trust me. That's why I, I love understand. my community and I lean on them because I believe that they have my back and they know that I have their back. I That's promise right. you. I, you know, listen, it, it is shows. What it is, it is it what shows. it is. Yeah, it shows. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Anthony Smallwood, owner and operator of Smallwood Care Removal Service. Our service provides honesty, respect, and compassion 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Our goal is to facilitate the delivery of compassionate care to survivors of the deceased, thereby ensuring that the remains are handled with respect 
removed timely and transported to the designated facility, and the handoff exchange is done with decency and in compliance with federal, state, and local laws. We can be reached at 843 697 9017 or 843 480 3460. If you haven't done so yet, please go to our YouTube page, like and subscribe and share. And welcome back. Pastor Taylor, we were talking uh, while we was on break. Let's talk more about the soul. We were talking about the body. We were talking about the health. Let's talk about the soul. All right. Thank you all so much for just being here. I'm grateful once again for the opportunity. So we're talking about the mind, the body, and the soul aspect of our um, healthy initiative, our initiative that God has given them to me. And so the Bible says, as a man's soul prospers, mm -hmm. so does he. And your soul can only prosper by receiving the word. Right. Um, I often tell people who call me, say, well, hey, man, let me get some boxes. Let me grow my church. You cannot grow your box. You cannot grow a church off fruit boxes. Right. The word still works. The Bible says as man's soul prospers. So as your soul prospers, that means you've got to receive the word of God. You've got to accept God. You've got to be able to become a part of the Christian and walk. You've got to be a part of the church family, the church body. And I, I'm not so always so keen on people joining the church, mm -hmm. this church, but join a church. A church that's right. Go someplace where you can be fed. And, and being fed doesn't just mean that the preacher pouring into you, but you've got to bring something to the table yourself. Amen. A lot of people say, well, you know, I'm not being fed. Well, what are you bringing? Mm -hmm. You got to bring something to be fed. You got to bring an open mind. You, you got to bring an open mind. You got to bring an open heart. You got to mm -hmm. be able to be receiving. You got to be able to be receptive to receive. Because, mm -hmm. you know, many times preachers can stand in the pulpit and preach all day. But if you're not willing to receive what they have, then you're going to leave the same way you came. That's right. And so I often tell people that this initiative of healthy living and healthy lifestyle, um, we feed the mind, get the mind together, you know, get all that together, get the mind, get your thinking right, and then get your body together, mm -hmm. get you feeling good, and then we work on the soul part. And the soul part just simply tells you how to walk as a believer, you know, how to walk as a Christian. And I often tell people that when you join the church and give God your heart, that does not mean you're going to be perfect. That's right. Does not mean you're not going to make mistakes. If that's what a person thinks, I'm sorry. Right. Because there is none perfect that's right nobody has ever been perfect in this christian walk but we strive for perfection right we strive to not live the same way we used to live that's why i said that that's why i said earlier that if we don't get the mind and the body together then the soul is not going to work because right. you can't get the soul together first mm -hmm. and your mind still thinks the way you used to think that's right you can't get the soul together if you're still eating bad and not exercising and getting your health together right and so the soul perspective is just working on the inner person, mm -hmm. working on that person and showing them how to be a believer, how to live as a believer, because we have to be able to use God's word as believers, right. use that to help us battle life. Mm -hmm. We've got to speak the word of the Lord. We've got to speak provisions. We have to speak promotions. Mm -hmm. We have to speak over our own That's families. True. We got to learn. But if you don't know the word for yourself, then how can you use it in your application of life? That's right. That's right. It's about the soul, you know. Um, we understand that when, when, when a person dies, you know, the, the whole aspect is that this flesh is, stays here. That's right. The soul goes to be with the master. And we want to work on that soul perspective of even how you worship, how you perform, how you react in the worship service, all of those great things. Right. So it's about working on the soul of a man. All right. That's, That's it. That's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. And I'm so glad that you spoke about that because a lot of people, they don't, they don't know. They just think if they sit in a service, they did a good deed. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more to that is really listening and allow the word of God to penetrate in your heart right. and your body and your mind and your soul to be able to walk that walk. Right. And you're right. A lot. There's no one on this earth perfect. We right. have to repent daily. Right. That's right. everybody. And you know, I think about, you know, the 
from from the church aspect of giving and tithes. You know, I'm not that preacher that's always harping on tithe and all mm -hmm. because my thing is that I shouldn't have to tell you what you know what you're supposed to that's do. That's right. If I have to make that my focus, then something is wrong. That's right. I believe once your mind is together, your body is together, and the soul will tell you to do the right thing. That's right. From a perspective of giving. And so, you know, I often tell people that when you tithe, it comes from your soul. That's right. Your mind might say, no, I don't want to do all that. Mm -hmm. But when your heart is right, mm -hmm. your motive will be right. And when your motive is right, right, you will walk through the words and wills of God. That's right. Your, your mind, your, your heart's got to be right. And that's the soul of man. That's you know, right. you know, I often tell people that, you know, <clears throat> your heart is the connector to God. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you show your heart. That's you right. show your heart. When you love, you show it. Love is an action where it's a noun yes. and it's a verb. Yes. It just can't be something that you speak as right. a noun. You got to turn it into a verb mm -hmm. and show some action. Right. And that comes from the soul. And that's why I said, you know, from the soul perspective of fellowshipping in the church, we show our soul. That's right. We show our love That's right. by what we do for other people. Jesus didn't have to die. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to. That's so true. But he did. He did. And he showed his love for us mm -hmm. by him giving of himself. Yes. We, he shows that. And so when the soul is correct, I believe our actions will be correct. That's right. Because it's, it's the heart of mankind. And, you know, so when the soul is right, um, our giving is better. Mm -hmm. When the soul is right, the preaching is better. There you go. When the soul is right, our worship is better. Mm -hmm. When the soul is right, how we treat everybody else is yes. better. But it all begins with the soul. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our, our ministry becomes stronger when the right souls were. And you got to be careful. And I don't want to deviate from the from the positive to the negative, but you got to be careful of what soul you connect with. That's, come on. Because everybody you count. You can't count on mm. and everybody your color is not your kind. Mm. So you got to be careful when you connecting with certain souls. That's right. Because the Bible says kindred souls will know of each other. That's right. If you and I have the same soul this and we are working so together, good. we're going to work so together. But yes. the very moment I see where you trying to, you know, do other stuff, my soul will say, hey, back up. That's right. I got to back up because I understand we're not on the same one on the court. Jesus right. told his disciples that you have to become on one accord. Mm -hmm. We have to work together. That's right. I remember them sitting in their upper room at night and he was talking about, you know, this body, this blood, and they were over there talking about who's going to be greater. Mm -hmm. Who's going? They were looking at the external. Right. He's looking at the heart. That's right. God does not look at the outside of man. The Bible says God doesn't look with the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart. He looks at the soul. Yes. See, we like to fix up the outer man. We like to fix Come up, on, get all pretty on the yes. outside and just as mean as rattlesnakes on the inside. Mm -hmm. But out of your heart yes. will produce love. Mm -hmm. And so that's the soul perspective. You know, out of the heart, yes. how do we treat one another? Mm -hmm. How do we love one another? Yes. And it all begins in your soul. That's it. And that soul is becoming the soul searching. Right. Because we right. need to do that. We need to search within mm -hmm. because so many whole things on the inside and really don't know how to let it go right you know right that's a problem with a lot of people today right you know just learn it if you just surrender to the father mm -hmm. and let him handle it right you know on the show there were times i speak um how i was always quick to leap mm -hmm. and not wait on the father but when i learned that when i gave it to him and wait on him this perfect time and, and then the inside I found that healing process mm -hmm. and then I was able to receive the things that God had placed in me so I like what you I like what you're saying you know the soul that is so important to talk about because a lot of people don't understand it and you it's, know, it's like stepping and stopping yeah there are moments of your life where you need to stop but you keep stepping there you go. And there are some moments in your life when you were stepping, when you should have stopped. Mm. And so that that's just a part about it. You got to be able to, when your soul is right, you're connected with God. Yes. And God pours into you. Yes. And the more God pours into your soul, the more you can receive. And watch this. The more you receive, mm. the more you can give others. Ooh. And that's the thing. Ministry right. is not to be to ourselves. Right. Ministry is to be, to be shared. Right. Ministry is to be given to people. We have a lot of people hurting. 
Mm, a lot. And we have a lot of people hurting. And you know, I often tell people, I can give you $100 all day, but what's that going to do? Nothing. It might help you for the moment. But then but, after that. But if my heart's right, my heart said, I'm going to show you how to get 100 for yourself. I can't help you with that. I can't just give you money. Yeah. That's all right. We can. We can. Add that's all right. That's good though. That's good. Because watch this. The phone can't help you with everything. That's what. Some things you got to take it to the Lord. That's it. And let Him handle it. And that's the problem. We use technology to try to help us with everything. Mm -hmm. We use our cell phones or technology to find boyfriends and girlfriends. Oh, come we on, We use technology Pastor Taylor, to try to find this and that. We use technology to try to get this and that. But guess what? Watch this. The only way you can find and get the help that you need is to take it to the Lord. Mm. He says in the scriptures now, look to the hills from what cometh my help. Yes. All of my help comes from the Lord. The phone is right. Mm -hmm. I can't help you with that. That's, That's a sermon right there by itself. And it just came I on can't help seven. you with that. It Something, listen, and that's the thing. We try to get the help that we need from the wrong people. Oh, boy. You stepping on some toes now, but they need... How can you here. help me when you when you going through yourself? Mm. How can you help me when you crush yourself? Mm. How can you help me to get delivered when you ain't been delivered yourself? Huh? And those are the ones that give the advice. So the soul is so important because yes. kindred souls are, listen, when my soul is right, my job is to help you get your soul right. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's, right. that's why I said that's the last component of the healthy initiative mm -hmm. because your mind may be working to become a better you. Right. You may be physically getting better, but if you then if your soul is not right, it's not going to complete it mm -mm. because it all calculates it all together. It helps it as one and it, make, it makes it become one. Right. But you know, we try to work on the soul first, mm -hmm. then everything else is dying. We got to work on the total person. That's it. It's about total man, total woman. That's right. And um, our soul is so important. That's why you come to church. You know, I, I like television ministry. Mm -hmm. I like all of that. But nothing like coming to the church on Sunday morning and sitting and hearing the word of God. That's right. That's right. Hearing the, hearing the word of God. That's right. How's it been for you since, you know, COVID-19 and everything is online now? How's that been? It's challenging because it's challenging because for me, I like to see people. There you go. I'm a people person. Right. I like to see the people out in the audience. I like to see to see their responses. I like to see you know, all that. I like to hear the choir sing. Right. So not being able to do that has been a challenge. Right. But God has still been able to minister. Yes, he has. Whatever the enemy does for bad, God will make it for our good. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. God will make it for your good. That's all about the soul. See, the thing is, when your soul is at peace, you don't worry about other stuff. That's right. And that's a part of the soul as well. Mm -hmm. Finding the peace within you. That's right. Happiness is only contingent upon what's happening in your life. Mm. But when you got peace that passes all understanding, Ooh. then your soul is fed. Yes. See, absolutely. COVID came to destroy. Mm -hmm. But watch this. God says, I've already caused it to leave. Mm -hmm. COVID oh, came to detour. Yes. That's all right. As long as they're not denied. That's right. I don't mind detours as long as I get to the destination. Oh, and I'm just so God. grateful to God that he allows what he allows because guess what? It could have been me. That's right. That's right. Anybody. That's right. So I'm just grateful for the mere chance to be able to minister to people and show them what real love is, reciprocal love. Yes. Love. When I show you love, I expect you to show me love back That's in right. return. That's right. I expect that. That's right. Because if you don't show me any love, that lets me know who you really are. That's right. I often tell people, people will come here and get all the time, but they never give anything. Mm. They never give, whether it's financially, whether it's help, whether it's prayerfully, they don't, they'll take but never give. Ooh. God is calling us to reciprocal love. That's right. Give. That's right. Whatever aspect you can give, whether it's time, whether it's financial donations, because what we do, and I tell people this, it's not about us, it's about ministering to the yes, total person. To those that are truly in need. Right. Not greed. That's need. right. Need. Absolutely. Right. And there's so many in the communities. I don't care what community you're in. There's so many that are in need 
instead of us looking down at them, right. we need to be helping. Right, right. That, that's so we'll be right back. The Bev For Real Talk Show would like to thank the following sponsors. or have your commercial aired during the show, please email bevforrealshow at gmail.com or call 929-286-3513. And welcome back to the Bev For Real Show. Pastor Taylor, you know, we get ready to come to a close. It has been phenomenal to have you here today. I know that this topic has blessed so many. Um, if anyone to want to want to reach out to you, call you, talk to you, even want you to pray for them, yeah. how can you tell them how they can reach you? Well, they can go to our Facebook page. That's uh, technology. Technology. Mm -hmm. um, our church phone number is eight zero three seven eight three twenty fifty, and I have a public cell phone number. It's eight zero three eight zero zero eighty six thirty eight. Mm -hmm. Anyone wants to reach out to me, but remember, your soul got to be right. Amen. That's right. The motive has to be right. That's right. Just don't do mess. God's right. written. I don't do mess because mess leads to misery. That's right. I'm not about that. That's right. So um, often you can tell people that we can we can do ministry together as long as your motive is right. That's right. So if anyone wants to reach out to me, that's fine. Contact the church, our web page, if you like BeautifulBaptistChurch.net, uh, or we're online on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and um, the webpage as well. So we're there doing ministry. Okay, that's awesome. So this will be great for those that are really in need that maybe can't get out here to when you do your loads of you know of the fruits and the vegetables. Maybe there's a way that it can be provided to them. Mm -hmm. So those those are the reasons why I asked that you would give that information out as sure. well. And of course, if anyone needs that prayer, mm -hmm. um, they can do that also. So we're getting ready to close. All right. I thank you. Thank you so much. Please come back. Yes, ma'am. All right. Invite me back. I will. I surely right. will. As I always say at the end of each show, be true to yourself by keeping it real, for real. And we see you on the next episode. The Bev For Real Show is produced by Vice Productions. Yeah.